Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn a little bit about scientific notation. So what is scientific notation and how does it work? Well it says right here that scientific notation is a way of expressing very small or very large numbers in a more manageable form. For example, let's take a look at a few uh, numbers that we're going to be talking about throughout the course of this year. During this year we're going to talk about a unit of measurement called the mole. What is a mole? Well, if you walk into a donut shop and you ask for a dozen donuts, you're going to end up with 12 donuts. Uh, in the beverage in industry, a, a case means 24. So if you have a case of soda, you're going to have 24 sodas. Well, in chemistry, a mole is also equal to a certain quantity. It's equal to this right here. 602 hexillion is one mole. So if you walked into a donut shop and said, hey, I'd like a mole of chocolate bars, you're going to walk out with 602 hexillion chocolate bars a crazy huge number and in fact it might be a pain to write this number out every single time keeping track of all these zeros and so what we can do is we can convert this into scientific notation 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd much easier to write and much more manageable than writing out this huge number in standard form every single time if we take a look at the mass of a proton which we will later on in the school year a mass of a proton is equal to this right here 0 0.000 a uh, ton of zeros then 167 kilograms all right so what we can do is we can convert this to scientific notation it makes it much more easier to write uh, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms is the mass of a proton a proton hardly has any mass at all but some might say it has a very nice mass all right, let's take a look at the speed of light. When we talk about uh, electromagnetic spectrum later on in the school year, we will be talking about the visible light spectrum. Okay, and so one thing that you should know about light is how fast it travels in a vacuum. And it says right here that the speed of light is uh, 300 million meters per second. It's the fastest thing in the universe. So we might not want to write this out every single time like this. So what we can do is we can convert this to scientific notation. 3.0 times 10 to the, to the 8th meters per second. Okay, so it's important to keep in mind that scientific notation is always going to consist of a number between 1 and 10 multiplied by some sort of power of 10. So we have a, a number between 1 and 10 here multiplied by a power of 10, a number between 1 and 10 multiplied by a power of 10, and a number between 1 and 10 multiplied by a power of 10. So now let's take a look at some of the rules uh, for converting numbers to scientific notation. Okay, so here are some of the rules and steps for converting numbers to scientific notation. In step one, it says to move the decimal in the number so that the new number you create is a number between 1 and 10. For example, what if we have this right here? We have 34,506,000, and we want to convert this to scientific notation. Well, the first step is to take this imaginary decimal right here, and what we're going to do with this imaginary decimal is we are going to move it between the 3 and the 4 to create a new number between 1 and 10. Our new number will be 3.4506 and typically you want to keep all of the all of the numbers, uh, the non-zero integers, as well as the little captive zeros here and uh, you can pretty much drop the trailing zeros when we're dealing with scientific notation. Okay, so we're going to keep this 3.4506. Once again right here, if we take a look, we want to convert this to scientific notation. We're going to have to move this decimal right here between the 8 and the 3 to create a number between 1 and 10. So the very first step is to move the decimal in the number that you're starting with uh, somewhere in that that number so that way your new number is a number between 1 and 10. And step 2 it says the power of 10 will be the number of times you had to move the decimal. So if we take a look at this example right here we had to move this decimal 3, 6, it looks like 7 times. So that is going to be your exponent right here the exponent on this is going to be 7. If we take a look right here, how many times did we have to move this? Well, it looks like we had to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times to put it between the 8 and 3. So therefore, my exponent here is going to be a 6. Okay. So the second step, it says that the power of 10 will be the number of times you had to move the decimal to create your number between 1 and 10. And then it also says right here that if the number you're starting with is bigger than 1, then the sign of the exponent here will be positive. So this is going to be 3.4506 times 10 to the positive 7th. And if we take a look over here, it says uh, in the rules in step 2 that if the number that you're converting is less than 1, that is to say a decimal, then 
the sine of the exponent is going to be negative. So right here we have 8.34 times 10 to the negative 6. All right, in step three it says to round your answer to the appropriate number of significant figures. We'll learn about significant figures in a different video. But right now it says to round your answer to the appropriate number of significant figures or decimal places. So for example, if we, if we wanted to take this number here and round it to just two significant figures, we would count from the left our first significant figure, our second significant figure. We'd look one past that, and the five right here is in the, uh, the, the, this is the third significant figure place. So the five is going to raise this to a five, right? If you remember from uh, elementary school, five or more raise the score, four or less let it rest. So the five is going to raise this to a five, and so we end up with three point five times ten to the seventh rounded to two sig figs. If we're asked to round this to the hundredths place, for example, the hundredths place would end up being right here. So uh, or two places to the right of the decimal. So this would be eight point three four times ten to the negative sixth. All right, so let's take a look at a few examples and let's work some problems and hopefully you catch on. Okay, so we're going to convert each one of these to scientific notation. So we have fifty six thousand right here. And if it's written like this, then you know that the decimal is going to be right here. There's an imaginary decimal at the end of this number right here. So what we need to do is we need to move this decimal somewhere in this number here to create a new number between 1 and 10. So it looks like what we're going to do is we're going to put this decimal between the 5 and 6, and we'll end up with 5.6, right? How many times did we have to move this decimal? That will be our power of 10. It looks like we had to move this once to three, four times. And last but not least, this number is bigger than one. So 5.6 times 10 to the fourth should be the correct answer here. Okay. 5.6 times 10 to the fourth will be the correct answer for this one right here. All right, let's look at another one. In this example right here, it says we have uh, 0 0.00000763 kilograms. We want to convert this to scientific notation. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take this decimal and we're going to put it right in between the 7 and the 6, right? If we do that, our number will be 7.632, giving us a number between 1 and 10, times, let's figure out how many times we had to move this decimal, 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And last but not least, this number is less than one, so the sign of this will be negative. Okay, so the answer to this problem right here is going to be 7.632 times 10 to the negative seventh. Let's take a look at another example here. And this one right here, it says we have uh, this many atoms. It's a lot of atoms. Let's see here. It looks... It looks like you know, there's a million, there's a billion, there's a trillion. It's a lot, a lot of atoms. So we want to convert this to scientific notation. So our decimal right here is at the end, the imaginary decimal. So what we need to do is we need to take this decimal and put it between the 4 and the 5 here. If we do that, we will get 4.592. And how many times did we have to move this decimal? It looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 times. So this will be 15. And last but not least, this is definitely a number that is bigger than 1, so the sign of our exponent will be positive. So 4.592 times 10 to the 15th will be the correct answer. Don't forget our unit, of course. What about this one right here? If we move this decimal between the 7 and the 6, we'll end up with 7.65 times 10 to the what? Well, we had to move this decimal one, two, three, four, four times. Last but not least, this number is less than one, so the sign of our exponent will be negative. Don't forget your unit, and there's your answer. All right, try this one. Go ahead and click pause and try this one on your own. Let's see here, we have 8,675,309 miles. We want to move this decimal between the eight and the six here, and we will end up with 8.675309 times 10 to the, how many times did we have to move this decimal? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times it looks like. And don't forget our unit at the end. Okay, let's take a look at this one right here. Our imaginary decimal is right here. We're just going to move it over one time. So we'll end up with 2.3 
times 10 to the first, right? And this is a number that is bigger than one, so the sign of our exponent will be positive. And always try to remember your, your unit of measurement. So 2.3 times 10 to the first will be the correct answer there. Let's take a look at a, a couple more examples. All right, so what if we're working backwards? What if you're given scientific notation and you want to convert to standard notation or standard form? Well, it's simple. All we need to do when we are taking a number that is expressed in scientific notation and converting it back to uh, standard notation is all we need to do here is we're going to just take a look at the exponent on each one of these. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the exponent on every single one of these. The exponent will tell you what to do. Okay. So if we take a look at the exponent at this on this first one here, we can see it's negative 8. What this is telling you to do is to move this decimal 8 times to the left because it's negative. Okay, so if we move this 8 times to the left, what we will end up with is 0 0.00000458. Okay, so that's uh, scientific notation, and we just converted that to, uh, to standard notation. Let's look at this one. We have 4.902 times 10 to the negative fourth. All right, we have to look at the exponent here. What this is telling us to do is to move the decimal four times, and because it's negative, move it to the left. So if we move this decimal to the left four times, we'll end up with 0 0.000-4902. Let's take a look at this one. Looks like we need to move this decimal to the left five times. If we do that, we'll end up with 0 0.000972. If we take a look at this one, this is telling us to move our decimal seven times to the right since the exponent is positive here. If we do that, we'll end up with six, seven, eight, six, followed by four zeros, and we'll end up with our answer. If we take a look right here, what this is telling us is to move our decimal, we don't have to move it at all, right? We don't have to move it at all. The exponent is zero, so our answer here will just be 1.2, okay? So that's how you convert scientific notation to standard form. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. Okay, so what if we're adding and subtracting scientific notation? Well, let's take a look here. We have, uh, we have two numbers that are expressed in scientific notation. You can put these in your calculator and easily get the answer, or you can just do it on a piece of paper, no problem. So if we're adding scientific notation, what we have to make sure is that the bases are the same, and we need to make sure that the exponents are the same. If they are, then we can just go ahead and add this up. 8.7 times 10 to the fourth will be the correct answer here. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, once again, we're adding this stuff up, so uh, we need to make sure that the bases are the same and that the exponents are the same, which they are. If we do this, we get 11.8 times 10 to the ninth. But this is not correct scientific notation. This is not a number between 1 and 10. So we need to slide this decimal over 1, and we get 1.18. And because we slid that to the left one time, what we'll have to do is we'll have to add 1 to this right here, and we'll get 10. So 1.18 times 10 to the 10th. Let's take a look at this one. This one can get a little tricky. Once again, we're adding scientific notation. However, the bases are the same, but the exponent is not. So how do we convert this to a 3 here? Well, the way that we can convert this uh, exponent to a 3 is to simply slide this decimal over once. If we put the decimal right here, then we can just add 1 to right here. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to end up converting this to 0 0.45. times 10 to the third. And now because these two uh, bases and uh, exponents are the same, we can just add these two numbers up and it looks like we're going to end up with 2.75 times 10 to the third. Okay, so that's how you add and subtract uh, scientific notation. Let's take a look at multiplying and dividing. Okay, so we're going to multiply and divide some uh, numbers that are expressed in scientific notation. So it's pretty simple really don't even need a calculator. All right, so we have this expression right here times this expression right here. All you need to do is multiply these two and then multiply these two and you'll get your answer. So 3.3 .3 times 2 is going to equal 6.6. .6. And then we have 10 to the fourth times 10 to the third. You know that when you are multiplying 
exponents that have like bases, then you're supposed to add these little exponents. So 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 3rd is equal to 10 to the 4 plus 3, which is 10 to the 7th. There's our answer to that one. Pretty simple, huh? Let's look at this one. All we're going to do here is the same thing. We're going to multiply these two, and then we're going to multiply these two. So when I take 5 and a half times 2, I end up with 11, or 11.0. And when I take 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 3rd, I get 10 to the 5th. However, this is not correct scientific notation. So we're going to have to slide this decimal over 1. If I do that, I get 1.10. And because I slid this once to the left, I have to add 1 to the exponent. So I get 6. There we go. Let's take a look at this What last one. We're dividing now. So all you have to do is divide these two terms first and then divide these two terms right here. So we have 7.5 divided by 2. And we'll end up with 3.75. And then... The rule from algebra is that when you are dividing exponents that have like bases, you subtract. So you're going to take 9 minus 3. What is 9 minus 3? 10 to the 6th. Okay. 3.75 times 10 to the 6th. So that's scientific notation. And if you like what you see here, go ahead and click this little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner. And that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments uh, down below in the comment section on this video. And I hope this was helpful.